um to, to go back real quick because i forgot to touch on it i'm surprised how fast um lady demetrescu's daughters died off like it felt like they only lasted like maybe five minutes each like in terms of screen time like they day off like i i don't want to do the pun you, you kind of like pick them off like flies it's it's pretty fast and then uh I, i'm actually curious for your answer sarah what? um i because i was watching cory play for this part did you get stabbed by the dolls whatsoever no i did not but i was afraid that that was going to happen because i while i liked that aspect of it again mentally i don't like like i have a fear of dolls and like the really like rapid twitching when shit does like it's very specific i know but i cannot handle that and that area was like an anxiety attack waiting to happen for for, for me so i was like running around like where the fuck's this stupid doll like i was like like racing and i think it's because i didn't stay in one place for too long or it was because I was constantly moving that nothing hit me. But keep in mind, I was also I was also playing on casual, so I don't know if it's different on casual. Um, maybe it takes longer for the dolls to actually attack you. But um, I no, I did not get attacked. But yeah. but they put the doll in some stupid fucking places though. Like I was like running back and forth and didn't see it. I had to yeah. like literally like peek behind corners or like run to an area i didn't think that they would use like i was like okay this is kind of bullshit but was, like it wasn't bullshit enough that i was pissed at it i was just like where the fuck's this right now i was lucky yeah. enough to have friends playing like playing <laughs> and like Corey, it's right there it's right there like it, it like turn around no turn around the other way because like literally it was hiding next to like a freaking dresser that mm. you could easily pass by yeah. and look at. i was like are you kidding me so <laughs> but um, um. I, I think let uh let's move on to Moreau, Moreau's like Beat area. Man! Or I, is, or is Blaine and I called him Incel Man. I I think it was a nice shift yeah. in uh, in um. <laughs> it, it was it was a nice shift because for Moreau, like he like when you first run into him, he's not like explicitly like against you. He's kind of like a pathetic lord. He he's just like, oh no, please don't take that. Everyone's gonna be mad at me. And then, like, as soon as he turns into a big old fish, then he like, turns into a giant fish. <laughs> and it turns like this bit, entire, like, huge, cool set piece. Where you're like having to dodge him and go through this cool, like, flooded uh, part of the village. Um, I loved every second of it. It, it those was those were my only deaths because there was some areas where I didn't know if his swimming was like scripted or not, and that's where my only two deaths came from, which was kind of annoying. Because again, they I didn't know if it was scripted, so I would run across a bridge and then not realize that I had to shoot something down, and then he would just mm -hmm. catch me, and that got me twice. So I was kind of getting annoyed in that part to that aspect, but I was still like it gave me it sort of reminded me of Resident Evil 5 in a way, kind of, with all the like falling down like uh buildings and having to make like path pathways and stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it gave me more Resident Evil 5 vibes. Maybe it was Chris was there for like a hot second. But like yeah. it just I, gave me vibes to that. And I was like, ooh, interesting. I will say I will say this one little tidbit, and this is just me nitpicking, but it was a moment that that gave me some pause because I was having a hard time finding out what like exactly like what area I was supposed to shoot. So like in this part, yeah, you're running across the buildings, the tops of the buildings, <laughs> and there's this giant tower or whatever you have to shoot over. Uh, I I went over to it and I shot one side, and mm -hmm. I was like literally looking up and down this entire little tower that's supposed to be falling over. I was like, oh great, did the game glitch? So I actually like reloaded my game. Oh jeez just to see if it had glitched and i was like okay so it's still not falling over so what the fuck is happening and so i literally go back like to where i was and i stare across the water at this tower thing and one of my friends was like oh there's some yellow tape right there that you can shoot i was yeah, like it's how like the fuck was i supposed to even <laughs> see that like i don't <laughs> but again that's nitpicking that's just I, like honestly i'm surprised um you guys had trouble with it because i i went through it um all with like one when uh one run like no dying or anything oh uh, yeah no i i died to the fish once and then the final boss battle i died once that's so, mr dr professor fish to you yes i died twice <laughs> in the entirety of the game and that was on normal mode oh the, you, that, um... that boss fight was kind of annoying with the like acid rain and stuff i mean thankfully i'm on oh, yeah. like, all the ammo in the world yeah, yeah what, what did you guys think of the boss fight in general because i did die that from the acid six 
I that did die. Like five. Yeah, I did die from the acid <laughs> rain at first because I didn't know it was like almost, an insta kill. I almost um, died from the acid rain. But but like as far as like the boss battle proper, it's really cool like leading him on chases. But like as the battle <laughs> goes on, he'll um he'll gate off your pathway. So you you're, you're trying to like lure him around a corner. And like oops, that's just blocked off. You're like oh shit, oh, I gotta oh, no. I gotta chop this down. Oh no, Jose, I I pulled a um. If you remember the movie uh, Watchmen, I pulled a Rorschach moment. I said, I'm not trapped in here with Moreau. Moreau's trapped <laughs> in here with me. <laughs> I just, exactly. I just love the whole spectacle of him being like big giant Mr. Dr. Professor Fish dude because it's just like it's embracing definitely that wackier side of uh, Resident Evil, like the thing amalgamations. And obviously like Lady uh, Demetrius did the same thing, but I really like that combat arena for um for Moreau. Exactly. Um and I'll say this, uh what's it called? Um Moreau was the saddest lord. Um mm -hmm. he just Sad got boy. fucked over by genetics. Yeah, like. it, it literally it I, I also thought of like Hunchback of Notre Dame with him, or like or like he was basically the Igor of the situation. He was Igor, you know? And it's, Igor um, it's the you know rough end of the stick in all of those movies all of those stories you know it's funny because when you're in that opening scene where you're, you're first meeting all the lords you're meeting miranda he's the only one that doesn't talk he doesn't say shit yeah he's he's shy he's a shy boy. he's a good boy he's a good fishy mr dr professor fishy boy mm -hmm. um i actually want to go back a little bit to that first big um or not even the big one. The first uh, Lycan encounter where you're with the old man. He's very nice. He gives you a little pew pew. Uh, mm -hmm. he, he decides to explore the ceiling for whatever reason. Um, but man, that first Lycan fight was... And um, maybe I got thrown off a little bit with my hardcore playthrough, even with my new game plus. Was that first like and take so many bullets to freaking down and like just like yeah. the, ent the entire build up with them in the ceiling surrounding the house, pulling you through the freaking basement. It was just so freaking perfect. It was. It was. Um. It, it's literally like the opening to Resident Evil Four, where you're getting to that first uh, Ganado. Except it's infinitely more horrifying. It, it's. It's so good. And then immediately after that, it's. Um. It just tosses you right in the fire. We were just running through all these buildings trying to find ammo to like shoot off lichens and um i kind of like how it you actually are supposed to go on that linear progression like through the houses finding cover finding resources because there's obviously way too many way too many enemies for you to like realistically fight off but like playing with headphones here the lichens like surround you like no matter where you try to barricade they're all eventually going to get in go into that last building the big old hammer dudes like smacking down the door you gotta escape through the roof like that whole sequence is so so fucking beautiful i i love it so much yeah it uh, it 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 really the way that they did this game was it, it pretty much was like parallel the way that they set up yeah. seven as well because it, you know for those that may not remember resident evil 7 the very beginning you're doing a lot of running you're doing a lot of like hiding and and just trying to frantically collect things and 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 beef yourself up even more so you could take on enemies and so it's not until like a good, I want to say, hour, hour and a half into the game that you actually start becoming a one-man army, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and and I, I, the reason I wanted to touch on that is because a lot of people, no, I won't say a lot of people, some people, are deterred by a game that takes too long to get into the action, that takes too long setting up the story and setting up the setting which I understand people could be deterred by this game because it does that. It goes, it's pretty slow to start. Um, with that said, I won't say this person's name, but there is a very popular streamer, uh, and I was watching this person, and they, were, they had just beaten uh, Returnal, <laughs> and they jumped into resident evil village they had already played part of the intro and they were already in the village they got to the point where they watched lady demetriscu flip over her table after the after the call with mother miranda they go into her room they start to read the note that's on the bed there 
um, or the couch there. And then they immediately sigh and say, can I be honest, you guys, this game is horrible. <laughs> can we play Goat Simulator or something? And I, I really try, I'm really trying not to hold anything against this person. Um, but it's very hard. I'm trying not to take it personally because it's just it, Resident Evil Village is is honestly one of my favorite games of all time now. <laughs> but I got the I got the point that this person had either never played a Resident Evil game in their life and they just were jumping in because you know, oh uh, whatever reason. There's totally different. There's all these different motivations that they could have been doing. All these different different you know motivations. Um, at the end of the day. Don't be like that person. Don't be, don't don't be, be, right. don't be a shit lord and, and purposely shit on a game just because it can't hold your attention span. Because a game is not shitty because you can't pay attention or because you have a hard time getting into it or because you're quote unquote not scared. That is a you problem. That is not a game problem. I f- so. I, it feels even weird like hearing some of the discourse surrounding people comparing 7 to 8. And I feel like the weirdest discourse I've heard about is specifically from people that have only played seven and are now coming to eight, where they have a different um, preconception of what the series is like. I would argue that eight is going back in the direction mm-hmm. of the of uh, like definitely Resident Evil four and Resident Evil five, um, because like <clears throat> seven, I think, is the more survival horror of the games. You, you do mm-hmm. have the limited inventory. You do have each enemy takes more bullets to kill. There's less of them. Therefore, there's more of an emphasis. Whereas in Village, there's more enemies who are still more than competent at killing you. But there's a shift in power dynamics that really sets this apart from seven. And um, I mean, I think we touched upon it earlier. Maybe I'll just elaborate. But the core tenant of like Resident Evil 4 and and thus this is that you you get exponentially stronger as the game goes on as you increase the amount of verbs you do whether it's new weapons whether it's upgrading weapons but it completely changes the dynamic from I need to survive from from these foes I need to either run around them or kill them out of necessity so I don't die and it turns into I am explicitly going to go out of my way to kill every single enemy because I want to get more gold so I can upgrade my weapon so I can become more powerful. <laughs> right. And, and I so- think it's I honestly think this person was missing the point of Resident Evil in general because Resident Evil and Capcom are very self-aware. Uh, mm-hmm. Resident Evil 4 was just B horror movie uh insanity and ridiculousness and everybody fucking loved that game um same with resident evil village it's very much that like gothic old like vampiric werewolf frankenstein Mm -hmm. you know b movie horror night that 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 a lot of people enjoy and it's going back to a lot of the things that I think a lot of people love about horror and um and a mix of like survival and stuff like that. So I think this person everything they were doing and saying was a gimmick. And it's mm-hmm. and if you are a popular content creator and you choose to shit on a pop that a a game that is the flavor of the month or a game that is popular in that moment, you are doing so because you want the clout. You want the interaction. And that's it. That's literally. Anyway, I always I'm done. felt like I'm done about this person. I'm done. <laughs> I always felt like Resident Evil Seven was a uh, reimagining of the franchise and leading it more towards its like American B movie roots, especially since Seven and Eight are the first games to be written by American writers. Uh, Resident Evil Seven being written by a writer who wrote horror films before Resident Evil Seven. Resident Evil 8, written by the same guy who did d- Shocker, the fucking Dead Space series, saved for Dead Space 2. He wrote every game, even the animated film. Um, and it's like, I feel like 7 was going back to its American roots, while 8 was, okay, we know what people like from 7, we also know what people like from the Resident Evil 2 remake, the Resident Evil 3. We also know that people want old Resident Evil back, to an extent. And that's what I felt 8 was. Was it was a mixture of the reimagining of 7 and bringing back the old that is good and making it like a sort of like an amalgamation of Resident Evil, which I really liked. Because mm-hmm. I um, love 7. I love 7. I love 7 because it's different. But as the whole time I was playing through 7, my, my mind literally went to, I want something 
that goes back to the original roots, let it be lore stuff or characters or like the feeling of just playing it. And I felt like eight did that fucking. Really this the one, bar did that. 